Greetings to all the fantastic fours out there who join us for maths. Uh, my favorite subject, but perhaps not everyone's, and I particularly have respect for those of you who keep trying, even though it is not your easiest subject, that shows great character. Um, also, just want to say good morning to Michaela Greener from Rhenish, who I know joins us for all of our lessons. Great to have you with us. Right, let's go across and have a look at obsums. A reminder, as usual, at the start of every lesson, uh, if you want to email me, it's Mr. T. You can email me grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com. Um, and after the lesson, click on the link above, do the worksheet just to make sure that you've got the topic that we're covering uh, in the lesson, which today is of sums. Uh, also, as per normal, the next slide is going to be your mental arithmetic for the day, that practice that sort of just gets us faster. Um, yeah, so. You'll have 40 seconds, there are 10 questions, you just write down the answer. Um, and today I've got two operations with each other, so it's times and plus, make sure you do the right one. Your 40 seconds starts now. And that's it, that's time. Let's go through them. Um, remember, it's about improving, so if you're getting better, that's good. Um, the more you practice, the better you get. Uh, 6 plus 9 is 15, 9 times 9 is 81, 5 plus 2 is 7, 4 times 2 is 8, 6 times 7 is 42, 7 plus 9 is 16, 3 plus 10 is 13, 10 times 9 is 90, 5 plus 6 is 11, 8 plus 8 is 16. If you missed any of those, just rewind the video, watch it again just to make sure that you've got all of those answers. Remember, it's about improving, so as long as you're getting better, that's good. And if you're somebody who always gets all of them right, then it's about getting quicker. So, of sums, um, it's one of those things that comes up. Uh, there is a way to do it when we know about multiplying fractions, but in grade 4 you haven't done fraction, uh, multiplying of fractions yet, which, funnily enough, is actually easier than adding or subtracting fractions. But that's for next year. Um, yeah, so we're going to have a look at obsums. Our goals today are, first of all, to be able to understand how to do the obsums, um, which is fairly straightforward. It's a simple sort of three-step process, and if you've got it, then it should be good all the time. It does make a difference if your times tables are good. Um, but yeah, it, it, just with those three steps, you should be good. And then be able to take word problems and use the of sums when they come as word problems and take, we take the maths out of the, out of the sentences and then we do the problems. Uh, so here's some examples of where you might find of sums. And the key thing is you see the word of. So a quarter of the class was sick. So there's the of. So we've got a quarter and we've got a class, so we would find out how many in the class and then we could work out how many children were sick. A different example, two-thirds of the team were 10 years old. So again, you've got a fraction, you've got the word of, um, and depending on what team it was, we'd know how many children there were in the team. Five-sixths of the people were wearing hats. Again, you've got a fraction part, you've got an of, and then you've got, um, depending on which how many people there were, we could work that out. Okay, so let's practice. I've got some on the whiteboard already. So you'll notice for the first few, um, for all of them, I've done it so that um, the number at the top, the numerator for each of them is just one. Uh, and that's, I suppose, the easiest way to start. Um, you start with the easy, easy ones, and that sort of makes the second step almost nothing, or the third, second step almost nothing. And, um, yeah, so, so it just makes it easier, and then we'll progress on to the slightly harder ones after. Okay, so we've got something. Let's look at this one first. If I said what's half of 10, I think many of you would be able to figure out that that's 5. But let's use a process with a couple of steps to show you how to find that. 
So the first thing I do is I look at my denominator and I ask myself, how many times does the denominator fit into this number? So how many times does two fit into 10? So you can count in two till you get to 10, or you could say 10 divided by two. Um, I'll do the first way. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Uh, so two goes into 10 five times. Now, later on, when you're good at this, you can keep this in your head. For now, I'm gonna chart it down. Right, then I'm going to take that answer and I'm going to multiply it by the numerator. So one times five, that's step two. And the final step is to put that as the answer. So one times five is five. And the answer, which you probably got before when you were working it on your head is five. So half of 10 is five. Uh, so let's just go, well, I'll talk you through that one again, and then I'll do, do all of the rest of these so you can just get the, the hang of it, the flow of it. So the first thing I asked was, how many times does the denominator fit into the number that comes after the of? And I got five. Then I said five times the numerator, the number on top. And that was the answer that I wrote down at the end. Let's have a look at this one over here now. So step number one, I'm going to ask how many times does the denominator go into the whole number? So. 4, 8, 12. It goes into 12 three times. So I could keep that in my head, but I'm going to jot it down. Then I say 3 times the numerator. 3 times 1 is 3. And then finally, the last step, just write down your answer. So a quarter of 12 is 3. Let's have a look at the one underneath, the one fifth of 20. Um, So step number one, how many times does the denominator go into the whole number? 5, 10, 15, 20, it goes in four times. Multiply that by the number on top, four times one is four. And that's my answer. Let's do the one on the right hand side. How many times does three go into 30? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. So it goes in 10 times. Oops, wrong color. I find color helps me distinguish which step I'm on. So then I go 10 times the numerator. Uh, so 10, 1 times 10 is 10. And my answer is 10. Two more of these ones with where we have one as the numerator. So I'm going to start by asking how many times does six go into 30? So again, times tables are important. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. It goes in five times. Five times my numerator. Five times one is five. There's my answer. I think you're starting to see the pattern, the process of this. So the only way that this gets harder is if the numbers really get bigger. And I'm talking about these numbers on there and the whole number. Um, but other than that, uh, I suppose also if the denominator gets bigger, it makes it harder as well. But other than that, the process is pretty straightforward. So let's see how many times does 7 go into 28? 7, 14, 21, 28. It goes in four times. Four times 1 is 4. And that's my answer. Okay, so we've done the straightforward kind. Let's move down and have a look at ones where our numerator is no longer a one. So you can see in all of these light blue ones, the numerator is a different number, but not one. Um, so yeah, so we're still going to follow the same process, but there's the a little bit more of maths working out. So I still ask myself, how many times does 3 go into 24? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. It goes in 8 times. I take that 8 and I times it by the numerator. So now it's not 1 times 8, it's 2 times 8. So 2 times 8, 8, 16. Oh, let, let's change the top color because we've got, let's do this. So 2 times 8 is 16. 
And so the answer to 2 thirds of 24 is 16. Have a look across at this one over here. How many times does 4 go into 20? You work it out. I hope you got 5. If not, then definitely practice your times tables. Maybe go have a look at times table mashup on YouTube. It's a great way to remember it with, with music. You end up singing the song in the shower. All right, so then we multiply it by the numerator. So 3 times 5 is 15. And that's our answer. Let's have a look at the next one. How many fives in 30? I'll give you a chance to work it out. When you get your answer, you're going to times it by the numerator. And that will give you your answer. If you want more time, just pause it. So 5 went into there 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12. So 6 times 2, 2 times 6. Remember, we've worked before with multiplication, and it doesn't matter which way around you do it. You're still going to get the same answer. So do it whichever way makes, makes it easiest for you. How many 6s in 36? Take a moment to work that out. If you've got six, then your times tables are getting better, or they're good already. Six times five, ooh, that's a tough one. Again, six or five times table. Work it out, work it out, work it out, work it out. No pressure. And the answer is 30. So two more of these, and then we're going to move on to some word problems, which is just as easy, but just has the extra step of trying to take the maths out of the, out of the word sums, out of the problems. Out of the words, really, that's the difficult part, not the maths. So, how many sevens go into 35? I hope you got five. 5 times 2 is 10. So 2 sevenths of 35 is 10. Okay, so normally we don't, it's not necessary to draw the arrows. Your teachers are only going to really look at the answers when they're marking you. They're not going to look at whether you've drawn arrows or written numbers. That kind of working is out. They don't mind if it's there. It's really the answer that they're looking at for this one. Um, so if you feel if you feel you want to put the, the arrows in, you can, and the little numbers. But really, um, we're really just talking our way through it. So I don't have a pointer with this, but I would normally for this kind of problem, if I look at the bottom one, I'd say how many eights in 38? Six. Six times three is 18. And I would just write it like that. So I wouldn't, oh, it's behind me. I wouldn't normally put all the arrows in, but if you, of sums is a new thing for you, then you should put the arrows in uh, just to help you and make sure you're following the process correctly. Okay, um, now I'm going to put some questions in word problems for you. So on Monday, two sevenths of the class of 35 were absent. How many were absent? Okay, so first up, we've got to take a look at the fraction part, two sevenths. It's written in words, but it still goes the same way. So two is the numerator, so 2 sevenths of, and we've been given a number of children in the class, so 2 sevenths of 35. So this one works exactly the same as the one which we've been doing so, long, so far. We first of all see how many times does 7 go into 35. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. It goes in 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10. And that's our answer. Next one. Uh, yeah, so because this came as a word problem, uh, if you've got your workings, you now also need to answer in a word answer. So uh, you would say 10 uh, students were absent. 
two thirds of a rugby team had held had black shoe had black rugby boots on. Okay, so our ma our fraction part is two thirds two thirds um, of, and it uh, doesn't give us a number, but um, a rugby team. How many does that have in? It has fifteen. So. Perhaps some of you might not know how many are in rugby team, but uh, when your teacher was making a problem like this, they would pick something that uh, you were familiar with uh, so that you would know how many were in. So if you had soccer at your school, they might use a soccer team or cricket or tennis, whatever it is. Um, but if you were ever asked a question like this and you didn't know, for example, how many were in a rugby team, you would be quite within your rights to put up your hand and ask your teacher how many people are in a rugby team because that's not actually maths that's general knowledge um anyway so back to the maths so we've got to say how many times does three go into 15 3 6 9 12 15 5 5 times 2 is 10 oops 10 so there are so 10 of the players were wearing black boots number three five six of the of four of the 42 people at my beach party were wearing hats so five six five over six of and we had 42 people at the birthday party so how many times does six go into 42 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. It goes in seven times. Seven times five is 35. So we can say 35 people were wearing hats. Okay, so now we come to this next one, four which looks very similar to the first question. Oh, I think I'm gonna to have to do number three again because you couldn't quite see. All right, let me actually erase that quickly and do it again. So uh, five, six was the fraction, five over six of, and it gives us how many people were at the beach. So we ask ourselves how many sixes in 42, seven, Seven times five is 35. And then we can write our word answer. 35 people were wearing hats. So number four looks very similar to number one. So on Tuesday, one fifth of the class of 35 were absent. How many were present? And number one was on Monday, two sevenths of the class of 35 were absent. How many were absent? So the only difference is that in this question, it's asking how many were absent. And in this question, number four, it's asking how many are present. But the information they give us will tell us how many are absent. So there's actually two steps that we need to do here. So first off, one fifth of 35. This will tell us how many people are absent. So what we're working out is how many people are absent, but what we need to find is how many people are present. So let's start off by quickly doing that. How many fives in 35? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 7. 7 times 1 is 7. So 7 were absent. Now we know how many people there are in the class, and we know how many are absent. So we can use those two things to find out how many people are still there. So we're gonna go 35 minus seven equals 28. And now we can say that 28 students were present. So you see the difference between the previous one and this one. So always be on the lookout for those kind of ones. These ones will be the more advanced ones, probably towards the end of your work, uh, where the more challenging questions come. But notice that, yeah, 
This one was two steps. You first had to work out how many were absent and then use that piece of information to find out how many were present. So here's another one that lets us go even a little bit further. So this one's also got a couple of steps to it. So first up, let's read the question. So my sister ate two fifths of a bag of 30 jelly tots. Let's find out how many my sister ate. So two fifths of 30. Right. So five goes into 30, six times. Six times two is 12. So my sister ate 12. Let's continue reading the question. If my brother and I share the rest equally, how many will we each get? Okay, well, there's two of us that need to share it. Let's find out how many are left. Right, so we started off with 30, and my sister ate 12. So 30 minus 12. If you struggle to do this in your head, you can always write it. 30 minus 12 and do column subtraction so naught minus 2 you can't do so you've got to borrow 10 minus 2 is 8 2 minus 1 is 1 so we've got 18 left all right so my brother and i now need to share the 18. so what we're actually going to be doing is to divide that by 2 because it does say equally but also my brother and i are quite good at sharing so 18 divided by 2 equals nine so our final answer is that uh, we you could write my brother and i we will each get nine jelly tots okay i'm gonna put one more on that combines bed mass and an of sum all right so here we've got a problem, and, it, and of sums will come up when you do, um, maybe not so much this year, but when you do um, bed mass next year, they will come up. And what, you, what the only thing you've got to remember, or what we've got to tell you now, is that in bed mass, we need to know which of sums, which where of sums are on that list. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that if you knew how to do multiplication of fractions, you could do this as a multiplication of fractions, which I'm not going to teach you now because you haven't done multiplication of fractions. But what that alludes to is the fact that actually an of sum is multiplication. So we have to do that at the same time as we would do multiplication if we're doing an of sum. So for my next line, I'm going to leave the 60 and the minus unchanged. I don't have any brackets, any exponents, any division. I've got multiplication. I've actually got two multiplications. I'm going to work for the first one first. So two thirds of 18. So I asked myself how many three is going to 18? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 6. 6 times 2 is 12. So the answer to this thing, which goes over here, is 12. I'm going to leave my plus the same and my 5 times 2 the same. Uh, and now I'm going to do my 5 times 2 because that is the next step. It's also multiplication, so leave that alone. And I'll leave that alone. And now the only other piece I'm going to do is 5 times 2, which is 10. Because I've only got plus and minus now, I work from left to right. So there we go. Let's move it up a little bit. So 60 minus 12 gives me 48 plus 10, oh, plus 10, and now the last step is the only one we've got left, so 48 plus 10 is 58. All right, and that's the answer to that one. So I think the key thing I just wanted to share with you is that uh, when you've got an of sum and it's used in bed mass, or we've got order, you've got to put it into order of operations, just remember that of is actually multiplication right so that's the end of of sums it's been good to have you with us um, this morning uh, i look forward to seeing you again at our next one just a reminder if you want to email me you can email me grade four, grade four at worksheetcloud.com and when you finish watching this video please do the, the worksheet above just to make sure you've got of sums 
It's one of those things that comes up often. In fact, every year of primary school, the numbers get harder, but the maths doesn't. Um, and so if you get it now, it's going to make the next three years or this year, what's left of this year and the next three years um, easier. So it's worth practicing this. And if you haven't got it, you can always get mom or dad to write down some more for you um, just to practice it some more. Um, and once it's once you've got it, that's going to make this section of maths easy for the rest of primary school. Have a fantastic day, grade fours. It's been lovely to have you with me. Goodbye.